Pool water chemistry doesn't need to be complicated. Hey there and welcome back to The Pool Nerd. I'm Justin, your resident pool aficionado. And today, I'm gonna to walk you through all you need to know about water chemistry. There are seven essential components of water chemistry. pH, alkalinity, calcium hardness, free chlorine, total and combined chlorine, cyanuric acid, ORP. You've probably already heard of the first three, but if you want your pool in top shape, you'll wanna pay attention to these other elements as well on your test strips. So let's get into what each of these measures and why you wanna keep them in their correct ranges by testing and correcting at least once a week. Before I jump into all these different chemicals though, I wanna highlight an amazing piece of pool equipment that has made my life so much easier since I added it to my pool system. Spectrolite Ultraviolet Light Sanitation. A lot of pool chemistry comes down to killing bacteria, algae, and pathogens in your pool water. And Spectrolite eliminates all of these things through UV light instead of chemicals. This means your pool will be safer for your family, better for the environment, and cheaper to maintain because you'll be using 90% less chemicals. Once I made the switch, it was a world of difference. This makes maintaining your water chemistry way easier as you will only be putting in a small amount of chemicals, which will barely affect your water's chemistry. So if you're tired of all these chemicals like I was, I would highly recommend the Spectrolite. Now let's start with one piece of pool chemistry you've probably heard of, pH. pH measures on a scale from zero to 14. Zero is very acidic and 14 is very base. You don't wanna be anywhere near either of these extremes. In fact, your pH should be almost directly in the middle from 7.4 to 7.6. If you go below 7.4, your water becomes acidic and can sting your eyes and skin. If you go above 7.6, your water becomes base and can cause rashes and stop your chlorine from properly disinfecting your water. A pro tip I have for you is to use household instead of pool chemicals to control your pH levels. You can use baking soda to raise your pool's pH and borax to lower the pH level. Both of these are far cheaper than their pool store counterparts, which means you will save hundreds of dollars a year in pool chemicals. Next, let's look at alkalinity. pH levels can be unstable and alkalinity acts as the shield to help keep your pH levels stable. You want to keep your alkalinity levels between 100 and 150 parts per million. If it falls below this value, you'll want to add some baking soda to raise this number up. And if it goes above this range, muriatic acid will bring it back down again. By keeping your pool in this range, your pH will stay balanced, preventing any health risks. The third most common piece of pool chemistry is calcium hardness. Typically, you only have to adjust this at the beginning of the pool season, and the ideal range is between 175 to 225 parts per million. If your water is below 175, it will be more damaging to grout and concrete, which can be especially bad if you have a concrete pool. If it goes above 225, then your water will become hard, which will clog filters and make your water cloudy. You need to add calcium hardness increaser to raise your levels, and if it's too high, you may need to drain your pool partially and add lower hardness water to get it back up to proper levels. Now we're moving out of the commonly discussed elements of pool chemistry and onto the parts of the test strip or kit you may overlook, but probably shouldn't. First, let's look at free chlorine. Free chlorine is the measurement of how much chlorine is available to sanitize your pool. This should always be around one to three parts per million and the closer to three, the better. One or less means there isn't enough chlorine in your pool to actively sanitize your water. And over three can start to cause skin and eye irritation. Chlorine is one of the more complicated parts of pool chemistry though. So we also have to consider total and combined chlorine levels. Combined chlorine levels measure what chlorine has been used up killing pathogens or other bacteria in your pool. Total chlorine levels are just the total of combined and free chlorine levels. The key piece you wanna pay attention to with these two values is that free chlorine levels should always be above combined chlorine levels. This means the chlorine in your pool is actually cleaning and disinfecting your water. If you wanna minimize the amount of chlorine needed, the first step is to remove the organic matter from your pool. You can do this manually the old fashioned way or with a modern robotic pool cleaner. If you don't have one yet, check out my top five robotic pool cleaners in the link below. With that out of the way, we still have more to talk about with chlorine, and that is cyanuric acid. Cyanuric acid is important if you have an outdoor pool 
because it acts to protect the free chlorine from sunlight. We all know that you're supposed to shock your pool late in the afternoon or at night so that the sun doesn't have a chance to deactivate the chlorine before it can disinfect. Most chlorine you will buy already has this added to it, so there's no need to worry about adding extra or taking any away, as it will typically stay in the safe 60 to 80 parts per million range. Finally, let's talk about ORP, or Oxidation Reduction Potential. This is a powerful metric that expresses the potential your pool has for chlorine and other disinfectants to oxidize and clean your pool. In other words, it measures the sanitizer in your pool. The ORP reading should be around 680 to ensure that your sanitizer is working. This is helpful because it gives you a more precise reading of whether or not your pool is being sanitized, so you know when you need to add chemicals. If you want to keep learning out over your pool, be sure to hit that subscribe button to keep learning how to make pool maintenance way easier. Head on over to thepoolnerd.com to view my comparison page and see all the differences between the many robotic pool cleaners out there. Until then, enjoy that pool and check back soon for more pool maintenance tips and insights.